I have the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the highest spec M1 Max chip, 32 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of storage that I bought in October, 2021 to solve for two workloads, software development and video editing. With taxes, I paid around $3,800 for it and last month I got rid of it. No, not to upgrade to the new M2 MacBook Pro, but to downgrade to the M2 MacBook Air that costs almost $2,000 less than my MacBook Pro, even with essential upgrades like 24 gigabytes of memory and one terabyte of storage. So why did I downgrade? Because I genuinely think that for 90% of use cases that include software development, the MacBook Air is the best laptop available and not the MacBook Pro. We will talk about the 10% in a bit, but let's start with the 90% of workloads and begin by talking about software development. Let's be honest. Most of us are working on small, lightweight services that compile pretty quick. And if the build and compile takes too long, it has most likely already been moved to the cloud. When I got my 14-inch MacBook Pro, I thought, well, I need to run 30 plus Docker images locally to debug through my microservices, so I definitely need one of the highest specs. But then I almost exclusively ended up using a script that creates a capable Linux VM that runs all the Docker images I need in about 10 minutes. And I can attach a debugger to the Linux VM and debug just like I can on my own laptop. And if the environment ever gets stale, you trash the VM, deploy a new one. It's so much easier that way. Back in 2020, when I used to work for DevTools uh, on Edge, building the entire Chromium source code on your local machine took a long, long time. But I never had to. The build was distributed out to 64 VMs and the differ was intelligent enough to recompile only the bits I needed. At most, it only took a few minutes. The point I'm trying to make is that most of the heavy lifting in software development these days can be easily and cheaply offloaded to the cloud. And chances are your team already has done that. And for the bit you actually need to do on your local machine, the MacBook Air with the lower end M2 chip can easily and comfortably handle. Um, because let's not forget, it's still an M2 chip and no slouch. A more common scenario with most folks working remotely these days is travel. And regardless of what Apple claims, the MacBook Air is significantly better at battery life than the MacBook Pro. Sure, the 16 inch is probably comparable, but then that's like carrying an extra child's weight on your back. The MacBook Air is way lighter, so it travels very well. It weighs just as little as my iPad Pro 12.9 with the Magic Keyboard attachment. So if you code on the go, this is definitely a much better pick. For me personally, this was also a major reason in switching. I travel a lot and tend to do a lot of work when I travel for work work or YouTube or just side projects. So the lighter, longer lasting air has been superb. Not to mention it comes in some cool colors that the Pro does not. I know, I know, some of you are probably furiously typing comments saying, but I build my projects locally and it takes me over 10 minutes each time and that's why I'm thinking of switching to the MacBook Pro. Um, or maybe you have questions about video editing because you edit multiple streams of 4K videos all the time, just like I do. Um, wouldn't the MacBook Pro destroy the air in those scenarios? The MacBook Air will be fine in both these scenarios, with a small caveat. See, because the MacBook Air does not have fans, it will eventually start throttling. So if your heavy workload is in short bursts, say less than 10 minutes, the Air will be totally fine. Sure, it may be slightly slower than the Pro, but you're talking about seconds in difference in a sub 10 minute workload between the Pro and the Air. For example, most of my projects compile and run within a minute uh, for one of my larger node projects, the spec'd out MacBook Pro finished the build in about 39 seconds while the MacBook Air did it in 42 seconds. Not a major difference and something you can totally live with. It's the same case with videos as well. All of my YouTube videos are in 4K ProRes and are around 10 minutes in length. The MacBook Pro took about five minutes to render them on average while the Air did them in about five and a half minutes. So the absolute numbers aren't too bad, especially when you consider the smaller form factor, longer battery life, and a significantly cheaper price tag. 
Also for those that are worried about the lower memory on the Air, when memory generally fills up, computers switch to using the hard drive as virtual memory. And usually this slows them significantly down because RAM generally has a much higher bandwidth than physical storage. But the SSDs on these Macs are so fast that for most workloads, you don't even notice when it switches from actual memory or the unified memory to the SSD. Where the Air will struggle is workloads that put sustained load on the CPU or the GPU or both uh, for longer than around 10 minutes. That's when the Pro will keep on going as the fans spin up, but the Air will eventually start throttling. So the length of sustained pressure your workload adds to the laptop is a very good metric to use when considering between the Air and the Pro. But as I've been saying throughout this video, 90% of people probably fall under the short bursts of load category. Aside from sustained workload, there are some cases where you'd want to consider the Pro. If you use your laptop for media consumption all the time, like watching movies or playing games, then the Pro has a gorgeous screen, which is much better than that of an Air. Um, although who plays games on Mac, I don't know. But anyway, if you listen to a lot of music on your laptop, then the speakers on the Pro are far superior as well. But while these aren't really too applicable to software development in general, since most people consume media on TVs or have external speakers or use headphones for music, the MacBook Air's true Achilles heel is its inability to drive more than one 4K external monitor. And that can obviously be problematic for people that always use multiple monitors. But that being said, you can drive multiple monitors from adapters using DisplayLink. It's just a slight extra cost. And also, if you are a business or getting this from your company, then maybe it makes sense to get the higher end pro to extract every bit of performance. Um, for example, I have a Studio Ultra that I bought for my business because the only use case for it is to edit video and a lot of them. So it made sense to invest on that. But for most folks who are buying it for themselves, are students or on a tight budget, traveling a lot and value portability, have a wider range of use cases but less demanding workloads or are simply looking to optimize the bang for their buck, the MacBook Air fits the bill perfectly. Don't take me wrong, the M1 or M2 MacBook Pro, especially when highly spec'd out, is a phenomenal machine. But for 90% of use cases that includes software development, the M2 MacBook Air is 90% as phenomenal. But at only 50% the cost. In fact, here's a plot twist. If you already have screens and peripherals and don't need the portability, then the M2 Mac Mini is hands down the best value. You can get one spec with an eight core CPU, 10 core GPU, 24 gigabytes of RAM, and one terabyte of SSD for only $1,400. Well, let me know in the comments below which one you prefer, the Pro, the Air, or the Mini, or something else entirely, and why. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.